Hello children and welcome to our special English hour. Here we learn lots of new things and have fun while doing them. Are you ready for some fun? Let's get started. Children, as you all know, we always start our day with something fun and interesting. So today I have a tongue twister for you. Last time, I was not able to say this tongue twister. So today, I will give it another try. Are you ready with me? Come on. The tongue twister was Eddie edited it. I will try to say this faster five times. Let's see if I can do it. Eddie edited it, Eddie edited it, Eddie edited it, Eddie edited it, Eddie edited it. Okay, I was able to say it faster five times. Were you? Children, now let's read a lesson from our textbook. The name of the lesson is At Science Fair. Please open page number 75 of your textbook. I will be reading this lesson and I request you to point at the words as I read them. And if you don't have a textbook, listen to me carefully. The science fair at Vidya Vardini school was always an exciting affair. There were a number of stalls, never less than 50. Entertainment booths and of course refreshments. There were two basic rules. One, everything should be handled by students. And two, everything, even the entertainment booths and refreshment stalls had to have a scientific base. There was going to be a science fair at Vidya Vardini school. And for this science fair, there were two rules. One, that everything had to be arranged by students, which meant that teachers will not participate in the fair, as in the students had to do maximum amount of work. And number two, all the stalls in the fair had to have a scientific base. Now, this fair was a science fair, but it was not a serious fair. It had entertainment and refreshment too. So this also had to have a base of science. Preparations for the fair began at least a couple of months in advance. The first step was brainstorming. The principal invited ideas for the event from students, teachers and even parents. A host of ideas poured in. Luckily, many parents not only contributed ideas but also volunteered to help with the planning and implementation of the big event. So, a committee of parents 
and teachers was set up to look after all the work of the fair. Some student representatives were also taken on the committee to give them a first hand experience of managing big programs like this. The science fair at Vidya Vardhini school was a huge affair which naturally meant that it required a lot of planning and this planning took many months. I said that students used to do everything but the planning involved the students, the principal and even the parents. They used to sit and brainstorm together. Do you know what brainstorming is? Brainstorming is when a couple of people come together and discuss and create a plan. So just like that, students, teachers, principal and even the parents used to sit together and brainstorm. The committee identified certain themes for the fair. They were plants, animals, properties of substances, energy, forms of energy and energy resources, science in our everyday life, latest news from the world of science and food and nutrition. Considering the area of the school playground and the estimated turnout, it was decided to allow 56 stalls in the fair. The stalls were allotted to as many groups of children. Each group selected a topic or idea from the chosen themes. The committee had to make sure that the topics were not repeated. The committee used to decide the theme. There were many themes like plants, animals, science in everyday life, sources of energy, food and nutrition and so on. Now, when the theme was decided, 56 stalls were set up and the students could take up as many stalls as possible. But each stall had to have a topic related to the main theme of the fair and the committee had to make sure that the topics were not repeated. The young scientists began their work in earnest. They began by collecting a lot of information about their topic using their science textbook, their school library and also the internet. They shared and discussed this information in their groups. The next step was to decide the exact activity for their stall. Whether they would build and display a model or give a demonstration or present their project through posters or simply exhibit a collection. The principal announced that the language, appearance and content of the presentations were all important. The language teachers helped the young stall holders to make their graphic and oral presentations more effective. For the exhibition, the first step that the students took was doing their research and for this they took help of their textbooks, the library and 
internet after this they would come and discuss and finalize what are the things that they would include in their content later they used to decide how they want to present their exhibit whether they want to show a demonstration or they want to show their ideas through presentations and posters the principal had also set a few rules these rules were about language and for that the language teachers used to help the students graphic presentations write to the point so that a visitor may read a chart or poster at a glance make use of bullet points or bulleted lists use pictures and diagrams and label them use pictograms graphs pie charts etc to show numerical data plan all your posters charts properly before you start making them make a rough mini copy before you begin work on the big final poster or chart don't forget to check your spellings sentences or other errors in the mini copy itself use different colors to highlight important features but use them judiciously if you have used any text pictures diagrams etc from elsewhere acknowledge the source oral presentations the oral presentations or speeches should be short and to the point 2 to 3 minutes at the most they should be directly related to the model demonstration or specimens exhibited in the stall be confident when you make a presentation rehearse the speech well be ready to answer relevant questions practice doing that with your friends make use of the visuals or graphics in the stall point to the relevant parts when you speak wear clean and tidy clothes but do not dress up to show off be polite be pleasant when you talk to the visitors if you don't know the answer to a question say so but later on try to find the answer smile so children these were some of the rules or guidelines for students for graphic representations and for oral representations and these guidelines were set by their language teachers at last the big day arrived the fair was inaugurated by the oldest science teacher mr gazare it was mr gazare who had come up with the idea of a science fair some 25 years ago initially 
it was meant for just one class but the idea had become so popular that now the entire school participated in it finally it was the day of the science fair the fair was inaugurated by mr gazare mr gazare was one of the oldest teachers of the school and he was the one who had started this fair mr gazare explained the importance of using the scientific method to find the answers to questions relating to the physical world around us he was happy to see the stalls especially the ones that showed simple methods of identifying food adulteration he appreciated the fact that in most of the stalls visitors could also try out various science experiments and models he gave a special pat on the back to the clean brigade the brigade members made rounds of the fair spreading the message of cleanliness but that was not all they had vowed to keep the school premises spick and span during the fair though they expected more than a thousand visitors and half as many stall holders they were a disciplined lot but what with so many activities and experiments going on it was bound to create a lot of litter they were well equipped with garbage cans scoops brooms and wipes as i said the world that we see around us has only been possible because of curiosity and the curious minds who kept on asking questions until they found the right answers and mr gizari spoke about the same thing he spoke about how and why it is so important to ask questions about the things that we see around us mr gizare also appreciated the fact that all the stalls were made in such a way that people could do some experiments and they could participate by themselves another important thing that mr gizare appreciated was the clean brigade this brigade had sworn to keep the school clean and they were able to do that although there were so many visitors the clean brigade made sure that there was no litter lying around now let us take a round of the fair to see some of the highlights the 6th standard children were handling the following stalls as you can see this is a girl at the stall and she is showing us a windmill and she is trying to show us how kinetic energy can be used here here we have a boy he is using a plastic bottle motor boat he is showing us how to use potential energy here are two boys enjoying telephones made from string so this stall 
was about sound. This was one of the stalls which was very popular. Here you would require help to blow balloons as quickly as they were used up. This was about electrostatic energy. This was the food adulteration stand. Here we were taught which food is adulterated and how to identify it. This was the stall about magnets and many people gathered around this stall to see how different types of magnets work. There was a stall about maintaining machines. Many visitors took videos of the presentation at this stall. This stall as you can see had many children and they were playing different roles. They were playing roles of machines and they were all crying out turn by turn. They were saying, hey, we too need your attention and we can only serve you if you take care of us. This stall was about how to take care or maintain machines. We have been talking about asking questions because that leads to inventions. Let's have a look as to how to develop a scientific mind. First, we observe what is around you. That is, we observe our surrounding. After that, we Ask questions like why, why not, how, etc. We may ask questions like why does a fridge magnet stick to the fridge door but not to the kitchen platform? Then, can you think of an explanation? This is what is called hypothesis in the scientific method. Here we start thinking by ourselves as to what could be the reason about this particular phenomenon. And that would lead us to maybe it has some special powers. Set up an experiment to try out your hypothesis. Then we try experimenting and try to test our thought process. I will try to stick it to different things, a wall, a tile, a potato, a wooden table, pots and pans, a plastic bottle, a cup. Record your observations in detail. This is your data. The magnet sticks to some surfaces but not to others. Whatever information we find, we need to record our observations or what we observed during the experiment. Draw conclusions. Do they match your hypothesis? If yes, why? If not, why not? It seems as if some metal objects are attracted to the magnet. They are made of iron or steel. So, our question was, why does a fridge magnet stick to the fridge? 
we conducted an experiment and our observation was that it gets attracted to certain objects that are made of iron or steel. Write down your findings and share them with others. So our findings were magnet attracts iron but not all substances, not even all metals. Children, I hope you enjoyed today's story. Now, I would like to end this session on that note. I will see you in our next session. Until then, take care and stay safe. Bye.